During the winter months, the United States is a skier's paradise. There's North Conway in New Hampshire, famous for its ski school, headed by the legendary Hannah Schneider, Stowe in Vermont, and Lake Placid in New York State. Travel across the Middle West to the lofty Rockies, renowned for powder snow and superb skiing terrain. Stop at romantic Alta in the state of Utah. Then there's California with her many resorts. Head north again to be awed by those giants of mountains, Hood, Rainier, and Baker. And there's Sun Valley, of course, where the paths of the skiing world inevitably converge. Nestled at the foot of the imposing Sawtooth Mountain Range, Sun Valley is truly a mecca for skiers. The Lodge and Challenger Inn offer every conceivable comfort, plus a delightful old world atmosphere. Whatever your favorite winter sport may be, you will find it at its best in the valley. You can cut the light fantastic on the ice rink next to the Lodge, like this lad gracefully blending her shapely curves with the exacting pattern on the ring. But the king of buses are on hand to take the classes speedily to any of the half dozen ski lifts. Waiting his turn in line at Dollar Mountain is Gary Cooper. And a champ. Just hit the chair with the seat of your pants, and you're off. So long, Gary. And watch out for them there long legs of yours, partner. Here's a beginner's class under the expert guidance of Fred Eastland, brushing up on snowplow turns. Overdressing is a very common tendency with novice skiers. A woolen shirt, one sweater, and a windbreaker should give you ample protection under normal circumstances. If you are aiming for protective padding when falling, the cushioning is in the wrong place. How long can this character go on with this routine? Protective goggles are essential to prevent snow blindness. Careful there, mister, or you'll be getting down to your last shirt. Then you'll really catch a cold. For pupils who are eager to learn, classwork can be fun. Whoops, doing what comes naturally. It's nothing to be discouraged about. Falling is part of the game, and even champions will tumble head over heels occasionally. For the novice, getting up again is almost like trying to squeeze through a revolving door with a set of antlers. Both take a little practice. No wonder you're having trouble, says the professor. Your boots are a mile too long. I couldn't control my skis with those pontoons on my feet. Hmm, and your skis aren't right for you either. But never mind, we'll do something about them. What's this, a lady in distress? Yep, there it goes, a rambunctious runaway ski. It can and does happen to the best skiers. Don't you fret, lady. The wolves ought to be charging down the hill instantly to your rescue. My gentlemen, how rude can you be, passing up a redhead? Well, it looks as though we might have to spend the night out here. But no, a fanfare, please. Sir Galahad in person. None other than Bennett Nelson, chief of the Sun Valley Ski Patrol. He's prepared for any emergency, particularly a pleasant rescue operation such as this one. One of the most popular spots at any ski resort is the village sports shop. What's new in fashions? What are the latest styles? A dazzling display of stylish and practical garments greets the eye. Proper equipment is of paramount importance. Since boots are the solid foundation of any skier's fortune, let's begin at the bottom. 
new boots, when first tried on, should fit snugly over one pair of lightweight woolen socks. Later on, when your boots are broken in, you'll find ample room to add a second pair of heavier socks for warmth and comfort. So don't make the mistake this young lady is making. Notice the groove to hold the heel spring of the binding in place. The rubber sole to prevent treacherous slipping. The blunt toe with sole protectors on either side. Just the workmanship and quality of the leather. They'll last you for many years. Take your pick. A cradle full of mittens, the latest in windbreakers. Made of nylon, the wonder. Windproof, water repellent, and light as a feather. Desirable requirements for an all-purpose windbreaker. An original scarf designed by the talented Max Barsis. Any resemblance to living persons is purely coincidental. It's a perfect fit, and the lady seems to be in perfect accord. Operation Boots can also be considered successful. Next to boots, skis are the most important piece of equipment. Oh, I beg your pardon, Duchess. Your slip. Uh, now, where were we? Oh, yes, yes, skis. Uh, many people think a ski is a ski, but that's where they're wrong. For example, here's a jumping ski. The three grooves are to keep the ski running in a straight line and provide maximum stability. The pair weighs almost 20 pounds, being considerably wider and longer than downhill skis. A special safety binding is often used by jumpers. Jumping, perhaps the most daring form of skiing, is a highly specialized art calling for superior skill and ability. It's as exciting and exhilarating as a parachute jump. It helps to start young, and Alf Engen Jr. is not wasting any time. Papa's antics don't seem to impress him very much. He's busy building his own scaffold. Stunts like these three chaps flying through the air in tight formation take practice. And a little courage helps, too. Want to know how it feels? A special binding affords the foot ample freedom necessary for the long, lunging strides in cross-country racing. The course is marked by flags and is anywhere from 4 to 12 miles long. It is an endurance test of competitive skiing, demanding top physical condition. Cross-country running originated in Norway and Sweden, and Scandinavians are famed for their endurance and polished technique in this specialized field. Purely from a recreational angle, cross-country skiing is a stimulating experience. The frequent changes in pace, winding a path through the tranquil beauty of winter's wonderland is a gratifying reward for the cross-country enthusiast. To get the best performance from any type of skis, they must be firmly wedded to the boots. Bindings or harnesses should be of good quality and easily adjustable to a precise fit with the boots. The modern cable binding with the downhill pull is by far the best design and the most reliable binding for accurate performance. It will respond to the slightest pressure, guiding the skis along a true course. The best skis are made of hickory wood, and steel edges are almost obligatory nowadays when it comes to picking a pair of skis for yourself, if possible, leave it to an expert who knows all the angles, proper length, weight, and flexibility. As to waxing, how do you like your skis? Rare or well done? Or would you rather choke on the fumes? Once upon a time, and not so very long ago, skiing also meant climbing. Climbing every foot of the way. Nowadays, lifts like this one scale the steepest mountain effortlessly, whisking you up in no time at all to the top of mountains like Mount Baldy, all of 9,200 feet. Well, here we are already. 
flock of snow eagles taking off from the very top of Mount Baldy for the valley far below. Ready, go! Slalom racing is another specialized field. It means racing against the clock to a maze of poles with flags attached to mark the various gate combinations. This is what they call a flush. It looks like a royal to me and beautifully negotiated by a forerunner. Watch Friedel Pfeiffer, a past master and international champion, dance through the intricate with the ease and grace of a ballet dancer. It takes skill and precision timing to hurdle yourself at top speed through this forest of bamboo poles. And the indomitable Dick Durrance, hero of many a fracas on skis. A champion if there ever was one. Low to the ground, pressing for speed every inch of the way in the typical style that has won him many a trophy. A skier's day never seems to end. There comes the time for a spot of romance, perhaps, while riding through the enchantments of a moonlit night in a two-horse open sleigh. It's an occasion for the ladies to wear their fanciest after ski fineries. And I'm sure you'll agree they are becoming. Music, maestro. Leave us have at it with a syncopated jive tune. Or a more soothing dance rhythm, if you prefer. The spirit is willing, but the dogies are tired after a hard day's work. Oh, 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 so very tired. And so your thoughts wander off into another world, the world of dreams. What will you dream about? Skiing, most likely. By now, it has gotten into your blood. It has become a passion. Rub Aladdin's lamp gently and conjure up any skier you wish to perform for you. You want Otto Lang, for example? He's yours for the asking, and will be glad to demonstrate a condensed version of the famous Arlberg technique. Walking comes first, step by step, like an infant learning to put one foot ahead of the other. It is a gliding and sliding motion, relaxed and supple, the legs move forward alternately, supported by the push of the arms and poles. An easy way of climbing a steeper hill is the side step. Dig your edges into the snow, as though you were building yourself a staircase. This graceful little number is a kick turn, and you'll have to learn it because it is one of the accepted ways to turn a corner, or to ring a doorbell while wearing skis. Don't be upset if at first you find yourself hopelessly entangled with legs, skis, and poles. Undoubtedly, you will find out which leg goes which way with a little more practice. The herringbone step is the most direct way to climb straight up a hill. Keep the ski tips well apart and the ends close together. The fundamental running stance colloquially known as shoes position, is the key to your future skiing form and the basis for a sound skiing technique. Skis are held parallel, with the weight of the body equally distributed on both legs. The knees must be pressed forward with emphasis. It will give you that feeling of leaning forward. Never sit back in an imaginary rocking chair. It is equally bad bending forward from the hips the knees have to be shoved forward from the hips down, and the torso should lean correspondingly. Now watch the proper position of body and knees in action, functioning like the springs of a high-class automobile.
the snowplow position. Tips close together, ends spread comfortably apart, knees pressed forward. The snowplow is the rudimentary basis for every turn in the repertory. To turn left, transfer most of the body weight onto the right ski, and vice versa, to head in the opposite direction. The snowplow itself is a symmetrically balanced position with the skis slightly edged and gently scraping the snow surface. When turning, arm, shoulder, and hip have to pivot in a synchronized motion while gradually steering the turn to completion. Both knees have to respond freely, particularly the one carrying the bigger load. When practicing this simplest form of a turn, you must strive for a definite rhythm and link your turns together with the least possible effort. In the traversing stance, the skis are lined up parallel. The upper ski should be slightly advanced. Stand on both feet solidly. Above all, do not lean in toward the hill. It is the angle of the traverse that regulates the speed. The steeper the angle, the faster you travel. The stem turn Next link in the chain of closely related maneuvers is basically a snowplow turn with the one difference. To wit, the turn is approached with the skis parallel in the traversing position, and after the turn is completed, the skis join again, facing in the opposite traversing direction. However, a definite characteristic of the stem turn is a preliminary wind-up comparable to the backswing in a golf stroke. This preparatory motion is the secret of a flawless rhythmical swing, particularly important in the turns performed at higher speeds. Side slipping is merely a controlled skid, purposely initiated by flattening the skis, thereby diminishing the grip of the edges, a most versatile maneuver and a lifesaver on many occasions. The sooner you learn it, the better. It demands relaxation and flexibility of the body. Once initiated, a constant process of meticulous adjustment of balance with the knees will be required to keep the skis moving and in proper position. As in the traversing position, the upper ski must remain ahead at all times with the weight balanced on both feet. Learning to ski is somewhat like baking a cake. You have to follow a recipe in adding ingredients to the cake. Likewise, fundamentals must build one upon the other in learning to ski. If one is slighted or left out entirely, both the cake and the skier will fall flat frequently. Just measure the ingredients properly and mix them correctly and success will be yours. Take a good portion of the stem turn. Spice it generously with speed. Add a liberal amount of forward lean, lots of body swing, plenty of knee action, and when almost done, Garnish it gently with a dash of side slipping here and there. In slow motion, you can see that it is a composite of all the elements previously discussed. A savory dish indeed will be the just reward for your efforts. A stem Christiania, no less, with the makings of a future tempo turn, a turn that every skier cherishes and every dove dreams about. Yes, the secret of skiing can be summarized in one brief and simple sentence. Speed is the thrill, but control is the art of skiing. So you see, there's nothing to it. Why don't you try it, Buster? Easy does it. Didn't I tell you? Left foot, right foot, swing your poles and arms. Quite simple, old chap, once you catch on to it. Now, wait a minute. What are you doing now? This is unfair to organized skaters. Remember, you are on skis. There's no telling what this character will do next. Oh, no! Not that! You'll be sorry, you'll get wet.
this is the end. And so it is.